Now learning about the third and last portion of the femur, the distal end, which is characterized by the presence of medial and lateral condyles. Condyles are one of the promising features. They are the rounded projections which forms the joint and are points of articulation with the tibia, which is a lower leg bone. A knee joint is formed when condyles articulate with the tibia and patella distally. While discussing about the promising features, I have told you about patellar surface. Patellar surface is the groove where the bone adjoins with the patella or kneecap and forms the knee joint at the distal part. At the end of the femur, medial and lateral condyles are present as rounded areas. The posterior and inferior surface articulate with the tibia and menisci of the knee while the anterior surface is articulating with the patella. The more prominent lateral condyle helps to prevent the natural lateral movement of the patella. Flatter condyle is more likely to result in patellar dislocation. Medial and lateral epicondyles are bony elevation on the non-articular areas of the condyles. The medial epicondyle is larger as you can see. Intercondylar fossa is a deep notch on the surface of the femur between the two condyles. It is the point of attachment of various ligaments and menisci that allows the movement of knee joint. Now these were all the bony landmarks of the bone. Let's move to the muscle attachments.